What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope you all had a great Tuesday. Um, the tropics continue to be very active, including what is going on right now with Fred, which has uh, popped off a big time tornado threat across the Carolinas, which is ongoing right now. It's not over. It's going to be going on throughout the rest of the night, this evening and tonight. Uh, it was very active today. A lot of uh, tornado warm storms and a lot of confirmed tornadoes. Fortunately, it looked like a lot of them were quick to spin up, so it was no long-lived tornadoes here in the Carolinas and Georgia. And uh, but this shift, uh, this threat shifts to Virginia overnight, especially, uh, and then then to tomorrow in the early morning hours um, for Virginia. So you guys need to be on guard up there for a tornado threat tomorrow morning. We're not going to talk much on that. But just know that it's going to be an active night, ongoing overnight. So if you live especially in North Carolina into Virginia, keep that in mind. But, um, you know, you know, talking about the tropics, you have Tropical Storm Henri. I was calling it Henry before because that's how it looks like it would be said. But it's actually Henri. Um, so sorry about that in my earlier videos. And then you have Tropical Storm Grace, which is just getting off the western coast of Jamaica. Land interaction with Jamaica didn't really mess with Grace at all. It's actually doing pretty well, and Andre is doing pretty well. And then you have a big old tropical wave coming off the coast of North Africa. We're not going to talk much about that, but I will mention here in the videos coming in the next couple of days about just some guidance, what it looks like that may or may not do. But if, before we get going here, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. I make content daily. I'm also a storm chaser, so I try to get out there in it. Um, it's been a pretty crazy last, I don't know, 24, 36 hours and uh, with ch chasing Fred all the way in the paint handle of Florida and then I uh, got in a little bit of chasing this afternoon. Um, but it's been very active, but I finally get a full night of sleep going on um, overnight. So let's really, let's just break this down. In this video, we're going to talk about Grace first and we're going to talk about Andre and we're going to talk about what kind of impacts could they have for really anybody in North America. So. Uh, this is what's going on with Fred. It's a tropical depression, but you notice you see these um, you see you see this action going on right here through the Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina. That is the tail, of, if you will, of Fred, which is popping off a big time tornado threat. There's a little bit of a low level jet going on here, and uh, just the wind field here supported with tornadoes, and it's been very like low top storms. Like I actually saw it today in Calhoun County near the Orangeburg St. Matthews area here in South Carolina. I witnessed it in person and it's crazy. There's just so much motion going on with the with the clouds, but a lot of them aren't really reaching the ground. And all, the ones they are, they're kind of going down, touching and then coming back up. So they're not really big time destructive tornadoes unless it just happens to come down on someone's house or building or something like that. But going forward here, this is Tropical Storm Grace. Um, Grace <clears throat> looks pretty good. It's getting off the western coast of Jamaica, and uh, it's dealing with a little bit of shear. But really, outside of that, it's looking fine. And what's going to go on here in the short term, meaning the tw next tw 24 to 36 hours, is is it going to have a chance to wrap its core around? If it does, then there's a chance for rapid intensif intensification before it ultimately makes landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula and then makes a secondary landfall in central Mexico somewhere in the coastal areas, obviously not literally in central Mexico, but um, the central coastal areas of Mexico. Um, very kind of a rare track, but um, this is what's going on. It actually looks like a pretty healthy tropical storm. And you look at the guidance here from the National Hurricane Center is right now it's a 60 mile per hour storm. Um, I hope you guys in Jamaica are faring well. It looks like the center of the storm is coming off the island, but I'm sure y'all are still experiencing some nasty weather. So I hope y'all are doing all right. But um, hurricane watches out for these islands just west of Jamaica, and you got hurricane warnings up for the entire eastern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, just just about as it looks like um, overnight. Well, let's see, it'll be around overnight tomorrow night. Yes, um, a hurricane is forecast to hit you guys. It's going to weaken to a tropical storms predicted, and about by about Friday, it looks like uh, this could re-intensify into a hurricane and ultimately hit Mexico. So uh, this is kind of a rare path, and I'll talk about why it's making this path in this video. But right here, the recon mission has flown into the storm, and it's clear that there's a low-level circulation. Um, you got winds coming out of the uh, southwest right here, wrapping around the circulation. The highest winds are showing up on the northeast side of the storm, where it looks like there's more blow-up and convection, as you can tell here. And that matches up well with what we're looking at right here. 
matches up very well. Um, but that's where they're finding the most intense wins, where you have anywhere from 55 to 65 knot wins. Um, wins at 55 to 65 knots. So um, you can tell with the wind barbs here, there's a clear, nice circulation going on here with um, with Grace. Now you look at the latest GFS and just focus on this. We're not going to talk about Andre yet. But going forward, look at this. You know, it shows it intensifying until to probably a category one, maybe a low end category two hurricane makes landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula by um, Thursday evening or night. It's coming off the Yucan, uh, Yucatan Peninsula, getting back into the uh, southern areas of the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Bay of Campeche, if you will, and um, getting and slamming into. Mexico as maybe a category two, maybe a low end category three hurricane. We'll, we'll check it out. I'm, I'm, I'm looking like it's looking like it might be about a category two hurricane um, as you get into about Saturday morning to this weekend. So very impactful storm for them guys down here. Um, and what you got going on here is a PV or a tut or you can call it just an upper trough um, that's really sticking out here. And that's actually providing a little bit of shear for grace right now. But eventually that'll break off and that won't really be a factor anymore. Um, and you really look looking looking ahead of this storm, the sea surface temperatures are some of the warmest in the world. Um, I mentioned, you know, I was in the panhandle of Florida where it says 30 degrees Celsius. And let me tell you, when I stuck my foot into the waters in the panhandle floor near Mexico Beach, if you don't know where that is, that is just east of uh, Panama City. Um, the waters were incredibly warm. I mean, I know I've mentioned bathtub waters a lot in my videos in here in the last week. It literally felt like a bathtub. It was crazy. Now, that is just rocket fuel for these tropical cyclones, and that is going to be the case as this gets away from Jamaica and the water some of the warmest in the entire world here in the mid to upper 80s. So you ain't got to worry about sea surface temperatures. They're going to be there. Now, what's causing this to dig this, dig this far south? Because a lot of tropical cyclones, when they get in this area, they like to get into the Gulf of Mexico and they like to cruise northwest. Not in this case. This dark red you see right here, that is a ridge of high pressure. And check it out. As Grace is getting down here, it acts like it almost wants to start to go a little bit north. But then it gets bogged down by the ridge of high pressure. Now the ridge of high pressure does weaken a little bit, but it's too late. Uh, Grace pretty much knows where it wants to go and it's heading to Mexico. So, um... And pretty much all the uh, hurricane models here, the model, the model guidance shows that occurring. It looks like they pretty much got their eyes pretty much set on the Yucatan Peninsula and then also Mexico. So as far as model guidance, as far as intensity, um, that is still up in the air. And uh, most have it get into a hurricane here in the next 24 to 36 hours. Um, how much more does it intensify once it gets into the deep southern areas of the Gulf of Mexico? That is a big question, but most have this becoming a hurt than our next hurricane. Now, you're talking about Tropical Storm Andre. I'm going to let this load for a second. We'll take a look at this really quick here. Uh, Andre is forecast. It will continue to be a tropical storm, but it also could become a hurricane, too, as early as late this week, as early as, as late as early I can't talk, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going running off a lot of low sleep right now. Um, but it actually uh, is forecast to become a hurricane as early as around Thursday or Friday of this week. And uh, it's barely moving at five miles per hour. It's uh, just chugging along. It's almost moving uh, due west southwest. And that is because it's flowing around the ridge of high pressure right now. Um, it's pretty crazy. This is a very interesting storm. Um, you know, Bermuda has tropical storm watchers right now, but really aren't they aren't really getting a lot of weather here. Um, and this is it. This is tropical storm Andre. Um, has a nice flow. You have some outer bands uh, kind of fanning off this, so it's ventilating pretty well. But it's also dealing with a little bit of northerly shear as you look at the flowing patterns, which I'm about to share you um, of what's pushing it in this direction. It's very interesting. Um, it is forecast to become a hurricane, like I said, late week, and it could stay a hurricane throughout the weekend. This is going to indirectly impact the eastern U.S. You know, it's, it's going to dig up some swells, um, and it actually has a chance. We're watching this. This could nick, nick areas of uh, the northeast as far as maybe the Cape Cod, the most furthest eastern sticking out areas, and then eventually maybe affect areas of Canada. So we'll watch that. As far as the GFS, what does it have this thing doing? 
Um, well, it has it actually moving west over the next couple of days. Uh, it's moving here. There's a ridge of high pressure right here that's bogging this thing down. It actually might move a little bit south of west here, like west-southwest, like it's kind of doing right now. And eventually it'll gain a little bit of um, northern direction here. And this is when it could really turn into a hurricane right around here, right around when it's the closest to the Carolina coastline. Um, so it's going to be crazy watching this on satellite, um, how close it is going to be to the Carolinas. But eventually, as you get into Friday evening um, into this weekend, it'll begin to gain a little bit of northern um, directional flow here as uh, the weak ridge of high pressure begins to weaken and the storm begins to move on out and accelerate as a trough begins to interact with this and kind of push it on out. And uh, we'll kind of look at that here. The steering flow is pretty easy to look at here. You see the arrow is pointing this way. Steering flows out the north. This is our storm right here. Then the steering flows kind of start moving out of the um, northeast. Uh, starts to move the storm west as the steering currents is really just whipping around this ridge of high pressure. If the ridge of high pressure actually stayed right here, then this storm would have a chance to get even closer. The stronger the storm, the more closer it's going to get to the eastern seaboard. So it'll be interesting to see how much stronger this storm gets over the next 24 hours. Um, but a, a trough interaction, if you will, a little dig right here, uh, pushes um, Andre on out of here. But as, um, as these steering currents really pick up, it's going to be dealing with shear, really. And you notice that the, the shear really picks up on the pretty much the northern to northeast side of the storm. And I think that's going to prevent that in sea surface temperatures. That's going to prevent any rapid um, intensification. Now, this is what I love to look at. The same thing we looked at with uh, Grace is um, rid the ridge of high pressure is right on top of this storm. And that is why it's kind of moving. Well, it is moving a little bit west. And it's, it's bearing around the northern end of the storm which kind of forces the storm almost southwest, probably for a temporary time. Eventually, you notice the dark reds, um, the ridge of high pressure begins to weaken, it, the storm starts to strengthen a little bit, and it begins to move a little bit further north, and is influenced by that trough and gets on out of here. But you look at the GFS, and you look at it for around Sunday evening, look how close this her, the GFS is showing a hurricane. Hurricane Andre gets to areas like Cape Cod, it's very, very close. Um, so we'll have to watch that. Um, it's going to be interesting what happens with this, but there's about half the model guidance, you know, forecast this to become a Category 1 hurricane. And, uh, you know, most guidance does show this, well, all of it shows it going back out to sea. There aren't, there's not one road model run that shows it plowing into the East Coast, so that's a good thing. So but that's all I got, guys. That's my update. I know the energy was pretty low in this video, and I was a little bit all over the place, but uh, I want to fit this video in. I'll be back to my normal self tomorrow. But thank you all for the amazing support. And I uh, appreciate all y'all. And y'all have a great evening.